So, a quick recap. The basic material, the constitutive material of melody in Hindustani music is the seven swaras and their variants, which are five in number. This is the 12 tone system found in many musical traditions. Now, um, is the spacing of these notes equal? So, this is an interesting question and uh, in uh, qu quickly we can say that in the context of Indian music in general, no, the spacing of the notes is not uh, equal. Um, and this will actually take us into the realm of the physics of sound, which I'm not going to do. Those of you who are interested, I mean, you can look up this topic of uh, equal tempered scale and uh, just or the natural scale. Um, so equal tempered scale is when the steps are equal. So every note is separated from the next by a by the same uh, ratio. And uh, in the tuning of instruments like the piano or even the, the standard harmoniums uh, or keyboards, right? These are all uh, tuned in the equally tempered uh, scale. Now, one might say that um, Indian music, we use the natural or the just tempered scale, especially when, as I said, the initial exercises, when you in, uh, initiate a, uh, a student into this music, we do use the natural or the just tempered scale. But then again, since as I have repeated, swaras are not standardized across uh, ragas. That is, it's not as if there is only one pitch that is uh, the Shuddha Rishabh or a Komal Rishabh. You know, there are subtle variations, which, which is the Shruti. Um, so, therefore, it's a little more complex. You can't even say that we use the, we use the natural uh, scale. So, anyway, in any case, those of you who are interested can go down these, uh, this rabbit hole of equal and just tempered scales or tuning. So besides the 12 swaras, we have shruti or microtones, theoretical tradition, the shastra says there are 22, while practice or prayoga is not concerned with the number of shrutis, though it is absolutely committed to uh, microtonal variations. And how we speak of it in practice is that we have either, a, you know, say in this rag, in a particular rag, the komal rishab is slightly lowered or slightly higher. That is how we um, uh, speak of microtonal nuances. How, how slightly or how, uh, how much, that is a matter for practice. Though there is a consensus, you know, you know, when you hear it, you know, it's, uh, it's, all right or not. So, uh, for instance, Marva, you can say Chadha Hua Rishab, Chadha Hua Komal Rishab. So, the flat uh, second, flat re, flat re is slightly higher than the standard flat uh, re. So, Swara with microtonal nuancing is a basic tonal material for that is used in ragas. And at a most basic level, a raga is identified through its swaras. Um, and it's, it's uh, important that you uh, notice it has said at a very basic level, right? Because um, there is much, much more to a raga than the swaras. Um, so we, we speak of swaras as the skeleton of a, of, uh, of a raga. Um, so, in this lesson, we will be uh, looking at this as a skeleton you know, and how uh, we have various, uh, a variety of ragas just in terms of the kind of swaras and the combinations that they have. So, you see, when you ask a musician what is rag, yeah, what is rag Yaman or what is raga chinchoti, how is it, or what is raga bhatiyar? The most natural thing for a musician would be to 
actually perform a few phrases of the rag. But if you had to talk about the raga, we would uh, the, the most basic way to do it is in terms of the swaras, and and we do it in um, in ascent and in in a, in a as arranged. The swaras are arranged in an ascent and a descent. The ascending scale and the descending scale, which are called the aroha and avaroha. So this is one of the very basic ways in which we talk about any raga. Now. There are some basic expectations about a raga with regard to the swaras. The first is that uh, a raga should have a minimum of five swaras. Any uh, fewer than that, for it to be even viable, you know, if you have only three swaras, and which was the case with, say, the psalm and music, there were only three pitches. So, not much is possible, right? Uh, what can you do with three uh, swaras? Um, so, it is generally expected, and, and in fact, most ragas have a minimum, have at least uh, five swaras, and we do have uh, uh, a few, very few ragas which have four swaras. But um, even there, we have uh, you know fleeting uh, presences of at least one other swara. So that is the first requirement that at least you have at least. Um, four, uh, at least five pitches. And the other uh, expectation is that every raga should either have the madhyam, the ma or the pa. Uh, there are, there is hardly any raga which skips both the madhyam and the pancha. So, these are uh, a couple basic expectations about every raga with regard to the swaras. So, a raga is at a very fundamental level determined by the swaras that occur in it. So, we have for instance the raga bhupadi, which is uh, associated with a scale that is very commonly found in many traditions of the world. So, bhupadi has five swaras, it is an out of raga. Sa, sa, ri, ga, pa, Dha sa sa dha pa ga re sa In Hindustani music, we, we say uh, we say re instead of re. Uh, original uh, abbreviation of Rashabha is re. But we uh, typically say re in Hindustani music. But I switch between both because of my training in Carnatic music. In Carnatic music, we always say re. Sa sa re ga pa dha sa sa dha pa ga re dha sa. This is the. These are the notes. And Bhupali, as I said, is basically its identity is constituted in at a very fundamental level by the fact that these swaras occur in it and not other swaras. So, if I were to vary even one swara in it, right? Sari ga pa dha pa ga pa dha pa ga re ga re dha sa. This is a different rag. Uh, not very common in uh, classical, in khayal, but it's very common in uh, light music. It's called pratiksha. But, so in this case, what I did, I varied the dha. Bhupali has a shuddha dha. Bhupali, all the swaras are shuddha. Riga dha. Sariga pa dha. Sa and pa are, of course, they are no variant. But riga and dha are shuddha. So, in Pratiksha, the next second rag that I demonstrated, the dha is komal. Now, suppose I. Um, Sari ga pa da pa ga re ga re sa da sa. So this is a rag called vibhas. Um, sari ga 
पद सार पगरे घरी दसा सो जस्ट द चेंज ऑफ वन स्वरा इट्स विल विल कंप्लीटली ऑल्टर द मूड ऑफ द राग सो दिस वाज शिवरंजनी नाउ सरी ग सरी ग पद सद पगरी सरी गरी सद सरी सरी ग पद परी गे स धरे ग धाप गे गे रे ध गे ध दिस इज अरा कॉल भोपाल तोड़ी इन बिच री ग ध अरोन कोमल सपोज वी हैव सरी ग पद सद पगरी दिस री एंड ग आर कोमल धा इज शुद्ध इट्स अ वायबल स्केल बट देर इज नो राग Uh, i am not aware of anybody who has used this as a rag so the point is that uh, just because you have a set of notes and it seems viable it doesn't mean that there is uh, we have a rag with that kind of uh, with those swaras so a rag is something that um that evolves in a community that is uh, given life by the uh, by musicians by performers and by the community in, in general um i'll just play a short clip of uh, bhopal todi which i demonstrated mm, this is sung by shrimati manini rajurkar youtube link is there below and i would urge you to listen to the entire thing so this as i said is sare ga so ri ga dha are all komal where you have bhup there bhopali is just सरी ग प ध स द प गरी सारी सद दिस इज द स्केल सरी ग सरी ग प ध स स द प गरी सा दिस इज भूप द मेजर पेंटाटोनिक स्केल भूपाली भूपाल तोड़ी सरी ग पद सद पग रे गे सारे गे दे a raga has um five notes in the aroha and avaroha each then it is called an aud avaraga and these are again ancient uh, these are concepts categories that are found in uh, our medieval texts too so aud ava is when you have five swaras bhup as i said is one of them bhupal todi was as another shivaranjani um uh, vibhas we have also ragas like durga madmatsar and many many important major ragas in uh, hindustani music are out of it is their pentatonic so uh, durga for instance is the rima padha these are the notes sa sa re ma pa dha sa sa da pa ma re sa this is just a scale though when you actually sing durga with a very crooked 
attack. You don't have linear movements. This is Durga again, another pentatonic um, raga or uh, pentatonic uh, scale. Uh, uh, it's another raga that is associated with the pentatonic scale. That may be the prefer preferable way to say it. Madhmat sarang pa ni sare sare ma pa ni sare pa ma re sa. So the difference between Durga and uh, Madhvat Sarang is just that Durga has Shuddha Dhevat and Madhvat Sarang has Kumil Nishad. But the Ragas, there is a world of difference between them. Uh, we also have Ragas which have six, which have scales that have only, that have six Varas and these are called Shadava. So you have five notes out of a raga and if you have scales with six notes shard of a ragas and then you have scales with seven notes you have that's called sampurna And Shadav Ragas are relatively fewer, but uh, we have important, very, very major Ragas which are, which have only six Swaras. And uh, again, Sampurna Ragas, many uh, important Ragas like Yaman, which is associated with the Lydian scale. Right? Mm -hmm. So only the Ma is augmented the Tevra Mathyam, the rest are Shuddha Swaras. And we have a huge variety of such scales. Yeah? For instance, This is Sahir Bhaira. This is the scale. The scale is just a skeleton. It's, it is hard for me, for instance, to just stick to a scale when trying to talk about a raga, but I have to pin myself down. Um, because the raga is never uh, performed by just going up and down the scale. So, um, there is an interesting observation made by Kalinatha. Uh, 15th century commentator on the secret uh, Sangeeta Ratnakara of Sharangadeva. Sangeeta Ratnakara is a landmark treatise of 
the 12th, 13th century and uh, Kalinatha wrote a commentary upon it. Uh, as, uh, you know, our, we have a commentatorial tradition. There is, we have basic texts and then we have commentaries upon commentaries upon commentaries and that is how the uh, textual tradition has evolved. Uh, not just in music, but in also other fields. Uh, so he says, Swaranam Swatheva Ranjakatve Api Tat Sandarbhasya Kadachit Aranjakatvam Bhavati. That is, Swaras are pleasing by themselves, right? That, that is the definition of Swara, as we saw. Swameva Rajate. But he says, an arrangement of these Swaras can sometimes be not so pleasing. And and in fact, this Aroha Varoha that I was just demonstrating, these are one such arrangement. Again, you know, beginner's exercises that we have, what we call Alankaras, they are not meant to be pleasing. These are just tools and exercises. So Aroha Varoha is such a tool. The scale that we talk about is a, it's just a tool, a pedagogical tool um, or a tool that we use to discourse about music. Uh, the Aroha Avroha in, in itself is not music, it's not in itself, not Raga. So, um, we have other complex, more, uh, we have a variety of scales, we have a variety of, uh, the very complexity of the scales themselves. Every Raga is complex, every Raga is much, much more than just a scale and as I said, it's never just traversing up and down the scale and there are other uh, considerations too. Um, but there are ragas whose scales are, it's, are themselves complex. So, um, for instance, mm, so we have uh, something like uh, Vrindavani Sarin, where you know you have the Aroha, you have one variety of Nishada and all. Amroha, you have another variety. So, Sa Re Ma Pa Ni Sa Ni Pa Ma Re Sa Sa Re Ma Pa Ni There's a Shuddha Nishad. Sa Ni Pa There's a Komal Nishad. So, and this, this is a beautiful rag because of the play of these two Nishads. Again, you have a rag like Jog, right? Pa ma ga ma ga sa Both the varieties of Gandhara, of Ga. Sa ga ma pa ga ni ga sa Ga ga ma ga ma sa ga ma ga sa ga ma pa ma ga ga sa So the scale would be Sa ga ma pa ni sa ni pa ma ga ga sa Niya Malhar is a very major rag which has a very intense use of the both the nishads Sa ni sa ni ni ga Re ni sa ni ni da ni. Now this is very typical of Maya Malhar. So if we were to ask for the scale of this rag, it's a little difficult. Sa re pa ma re pa ma pa ni da ni sa ni pa. This would be a rough, uh, walkable scale, but it's, it's not really captured in the scale. There are other phrases that the scale doesn't quite indicate. Hmm? And um, some uh, scales are involved other complexities like uh, crookedness. Sa gare ga pa da ni sa da ba ma ga. This is a raga called Alhaya Bilawal. So, 
sa re ga pa we won't go like that the scale itself is sa ga re ga pa so that that crookedness right vakrata sa ga re ga pa ga pa da ni sa ni da pa ma ga re ga pa ma ga re sa See, these are all really hard to capture in a scale also sa da ma sa da pa ma pa ga pa ga re sa this is rag bhatia sa da pa ma pa ga ma dha sa re ni da pa dha ma pa ga pa re sa and the aro bro simply cannot capture the uh, or give an idea of what are the various phrases that constitute this raga we have already seen raga nand which is also another very complex raga ga ma ga pa da ma pa ga ma ra pa re sa ga ma pa ni pa da ma pa ga ma pa sa re ni sa da ni pa da ma pa ga ga ma da pa re sa it's almost uh, impossible to give an adequate aroha aroha for such rakas so in terms of aroha aroha and the scale we have a a uh, large variety uh we have scales with five or six or seven swaras we have combinations of these also you know we have ragas in which aroha may have five avaroha will have seven so it will be avadava sampurna that kind of those are also a very important category of ragas many ragas do that you know they uh, uh the number of swaras that are used in the aroha and avaroha are different so there will be some swaras that cannot be used in the aroha but have to be used in the avaroha so uh, behag for instance is a very important rag which is like this um sa ga ma pa ni sa ni da pa ma ga ma ga ri sa in fact it uses both the madhyams also behag so there are many ragas like that um so uh, we have other kinds of complexities complications with the, the scale some ragas which are almost impossible to capture in a scale uh, even in a rudimentary way any scale is only a rudimentary uh, capturing of the raga it gives you a very very rudimentary introduction to the raga but some ragas defy even that um, so a scale itself cannot give the raga so what does it really mean to say that re is there in the aroha it really means that re ga after re you can go to the next to another higher note that's all it means what how which is the other note how how does it go what phrases what ornament all these are left uh, undefined uh, by the scale so it could be sa re ga sa re pa ga re pa da ma re so re pa this is also arohi right re ga re pa re da ma re da sa let's listen to a very short performance of the vakra rag this is called vakra you know when you have a crooked ascent and descent like so this is a very important rag again god sarang which is just so crooked even the scale itself is vakra 
Sagare maga, you're up sari gama gano. Instead of, if you have, if you want to go to re, you can't go sari no. Sagare, sagare maga, paga mari gare maga. Gare maga, pamada upa. Nira sani sadani padama pagama re gare maga pare sa This is one way of uh, showing the of of This is one way of capturing God saring in a scale It's full of twists Gare maga Sare ni sagare maga Pamaga Panida ni padama pagama re gare maga Ga pare sa Ga mare sa gare maga Sagare, 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 Maga Sare ni Sagare, Maga Padma, Padma, Regare, Maga Paisapa, Maga Pani sare sare dama pagama re gare maga ga pare sa God sarang.